Spring has officially sprung, and one of the great vegetables of spring is asparagus. Hi, I'm Chef Shirley, and today I'm going to show you how to make a great ham and asparagus frittata. We're going to start first by sauteing some of our ingredients. We have onions, and we have peppers, and of course our star ingredient, the asparagus. And we're going to let this cook for about three to five minutes until everything's kind of softened a bit. While this is going on, we're going to move over here and we're going to start making our base to our frittata. We have eggs and egg whites and we're adding in ham, we're adding in some Italian seasoning and we're going to add in some cheese and salt and pepper. We're going to give this a really good whisk and then we're going to wait until our mixture over there is done sauteing and we'll add this to it. These veggies look totally done and now we are going to add in our wet ingredients. Scrape that all into that pot. And then we're gonna just mix this all around. You can use a spoon if you want. And just make sure everything is coated with the egg. And we're gonna put a lid on this and let it cook for about three minutes. We're gonna take the lid off and we are going to put this in the oven. But first, if you have a plastic handle on your frying pan, just cover it up with some foil and this will protect it from melting. And then we're gonna pop this in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. All right, this is ready. That looks excellent. Okay, so now we're gonna take this and we can cut it into some wedges. This is really fluffy and light and will be a great dish for spring dinner. And then we can just take a piece and plate this up. There we go. And that's another great spring dish for your Carolina cookbook. I'm Chef Shirley. Try it today. Santa has his elves, but this is where the Easter Bunny comes to when he's making all those yummy chocolate treats for Easter. Hi, I'm Chef Shirley, and today we're at Chocolate Smiles here in Cary, so let's go inside and see them making some treats. Chocolate Smiles has been making chocolates for over 20 years, and this is where all the magic happens. And this is Sandra, the owner. Sandra, you say that you make chocolates the old-timey way. Can you please explain that? Mm -hmm. Well, we start out with a big 10-pound block of chocolate, and we take it over to our machine, we break it down, and we temper it, which means we bring it into a uh, certain temperature, then we bring it back down, and then we bring it back up. So it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to get the actual machine running, mm -hmm. and once we get the machine running, then we can start dipping our chocolate, whether it's like in this case making bunnies, and we use the old-timey plastic mold, we pour the chocolate into the mold. After it sets for a while, we move it to the cooler. It sets in the cooler until it loses what we call its gloss, and then we bring it out, pour the mold onto the paper, and then uh, we let it set until it comes to room temperature, and from there we can either bag it or box it. Well, let's get to uh, showing me how to make a bunny. Okay, well, we have a mold here, and here's our chocolate. Okay. So we take our dipper, and we'll dip some chocolate. Make sure the I'm going to let you do this. Okay. Because <laughs> you know what you're doing. And the chocolate in the front is already tempered. It's ready to go. It's at about 92 degrees, and so it's the right temperature. Okay. And you said this is a Swiss chocolate. Right. Okay. If, you, if it's not tempered correctly, what happens after it dries, it will turn white on you. Ooh. Okay. okay. So I take this, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to gently lift up our stopper, go around the edges. Get up in his ears. Does that look about right? You're doing a good job. Okay. Just a little bit more, maybe one more plunger. All right. And that should do it. There we go. And then you tap it out and to smooth it into best. all the edges. 
And it's a little more time consuming to do it this way, but this is the old timey way of making it. So you have a mold of one side is the front and one is the back, mm -hmm. and then you glue them together with some chocolate? Mm -hmm. Just stick them together with the chocolate. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now after they sit here for a while and they lose their gloss, we move them to the cooler. Mm -hmm. And we have a few in the cooler now, but they're probably almost ready to take out. Okay. Okay, these are ready. They're out of the cooler now. Okay. So if you'd like to take it and just kind of flip it over on the tray. and it'll, here. Uh-huh, and it'll pop it right out. Kind of touch it, yep. Ooh, look at that. And this one. Just kind of get it down low. Kind of rub on it. Let it kind of get the, your hand across it, and it should pop right out. Mm -hmm. And that's ready. Little Peter Cottontail there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Sandra, for uh, allowing us to come in and see what you do, okay. how you make the bunnies. Well, if you need a part-time job, you can come help make bunnies. <laughs> Excellent. So if you're thinking of visiting Chocolate Smiles, they're located where else? Chocolate Smiles Village here in Cary. I'm Chef Shirley. Try them today, and happy Easter. To watch more Carolina Cook... For this St. Patrick's Day weekend, I have two quick and easy recipes using potatoes. Hi, I'm Chef Shirley, and today I'm going to show you how to make green mashed potatoes and a simple Irish potato soup. We're going to begin by making our green mashed potatoes. And in our bowl, I have green edamame. And edamame are these guys here. They're soybeans, and all you have to do is follow the directions on the back and just boil them in some salted water until they're a little bit soft. So we have that, and we're going to take our stick mixer, and if you can do this in a food processor also, and mix it. And you want to just break these up, pulverize them, and then we're going to add in our potatoes. And you don't have to do them really well, because we're going to be mixing these in with the potatoes. Look at that great green color. That's excellent. And then... We're going to come over here, and we have our potatoes that I have peeled and boiled and diced. And I put a little bit of chicken broth in the water, and that was just to give the potatoes a little bit of flavor. And then we're going to add a, a bit of soy milk, and you can use regular milk. Add that in there, and then we're going to mix it up. Now you want to season this with some salt and pepper. And then also, if the potatoes are too thick, and not creamy enough, you can use the broth that you use to cook the potatoes in. And again, there's that chicken broth in there, which is going to impart a lot of flavor. And you want to just add a little bit at a time and mix it up. And look how colorful that is. The kids will love this, too. To make our soup, we're going to get started by adding some butter and our onions and our potatoes. And we're just going to give these a stir and cook them for about 10 minutes until they are softened. We're going to season this with some salt and pepper and then we're going to add in our soy milk and now you can use regular milk or 2% milk, whatever you'd want and put about six cups in and then we're going to let this cook for another 15-20 minutes and all the flavors are going to melt together. It's going to be wonderful and this is so simple but really really easy to, to make. And that's two quick and easy St. Patrick's Day recipes for your Carolina cookbook. I'm Chef Shirley. Try them today. Going organic is easier than ever these days. Hi, I'm Chef Shirley, and today is Earth Day, the perfect day to start incorporating organic foods into your diet. This is Earth Bear, a grocery store that specializes in organic produce, and this is Chef Dave with Earth Bear. Dave, why is organic produce one of the best ways to start when you're starting out with organics? Uh, well, it's the most natural way to start, and also uh, it's the most nutritious way to eat. Uh, organics are generally uh, local ingredients, and they uh, come from farmers who care about what they're growing. Excellent. And produce, starting with produce, is really easy because you guys have so much, That's right? That's right. Eighty percent of our stock is, is organic produce. Excellent. You can even buy organic coffee these days. Dave, I noticed on a lot of packages it'll say either organic, fair trade, or shade grown. What are the differences? Right. Uh, organic basically means the same as the produce. It's going to be pesticide free and chemical free, and that's the way it's grown. 
with the uh, fair trade coffee, that's just guaranteeing that the farmer is getting a fair price for his coffee. And with the shade grown, that's allowing the uh, natural birds that live in the area to live uh, freely with the coffee plants and also provides a, a bean that's much smoother roast. Excellent. Thanks so much for being with us today. Thank you. Now we're in the cheese section with our cheese specialist, Craig. Now, Craig, I love local cheeses, and you guys have so many of them here. They don't say certified organic on them, but would you suspect that some of them maybe are? I would say that most of them probably are. Okay, uh, and why would that be? Well, these are small farms that hand make their cheeses, and they, their families work on the farms. They use mostly natural products. They don't want to treat their, their, uh, their hay fields with synthetic uh, materials. and. So the milk comes out natural. The milk comes out natural, and that makes make the, the cheese, cheese natural as well. Excellent. Yes. Thanks so much for being with us. You're welcome. So if you're intimidated by specialty stores like this one, go slow. Most grocery stores these days have their own organic aisle. I'm Chef Shirley. Have a great Earth Day, and try organics today.